Hey, what's going on you guys? My name is The Raptor and welcome back to another one of my reaction videos. And today I'm going to be reacting to the new episode of Death Battle which just came out, which is The Chosen Undead, or Dark Souls in this case, versus The Dragonborn, or The Last Dragonborn from Skyrim. Um, I am really excited for this episode. I'm going to be honest, I don't have an overwhelming amount of knowledge on either of these characters or these franchises specifically, but I'm still really excited to see what this episode has. Um, I know it's a 3D fight, so I'm really excited to see what that looks like like in terms of who I'm rooting for I don't have any huge history with either of these series or these characters so I, I don't think I'm really rooting for any character um, I guess if I really had to choose one maybe the last dragonborn just because like I've seen some I've seen a, quite a few videos of Skyrim online you know like let's plays and stuff but that that's that's kind of it you know so I don't know in terms of who I think is going to win I think it's tough you know I think Either way you slice it, it's going to be hard for the Dragonborn to kill the Chosen Undead, unless I'm completely missing something, but I think it's going to be difficult. Meaning that if they come to the conclusion that the Chosen Undead, you know, is, is able to keep up with the Dragonborn in terms of power, or, you know, that he surpasses him in power, then I think, you know, the Chosen Undead is eventually going to win, you know, eventually going to wear him down. But if they come to the conclusion that the Dragonborn is more powerful, then, you know, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe they might come up with some way that the Dragonborn would actually be able to stop uh, the Chosen Undead from regenerating, but, you know, I don't know. Um, I did say in my prediction that I thought the Dragonborn was going to win, but I am perfectly open to having my mind changed, you know. I know these guys know more about these characters than I do, so, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. This was a short intro because I don't really have much more to say. Um, I am still testing out some new recording methods, though, so this might look a little different from the last reaction, um, but, uh, but hopefully it should still all sound and look good. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get started. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Brandon Yates. That's right, our Brandon Yates. Really? Okay, great. Good for you, Brandon. <laughs> Here we go, Death Battle. The Chosen Undead, the accursed god killer from Dark Souls. The last dragon. I'm really gonna have to pay attention because they're gonna go over a ton of stuff that I don't know. These two demi-human heroes embrace their destinies and stare down the very gods themselves. And devoured their friggin' souls. Yep. <laughs> because these two lack specific cannon arsenals and movesets due to being role-playing protagonists. Yep. For this death battle, we're giving them everything they have and maxing out all of their stats. Which is totally possible in game if you're willing to grind. He's with Okay, so that that actually makes a lot of sense then. And I did know they were going to do that. I, I heard that was confirmed. All right, I'm excited. Let's go. Our story begins at the end. The great cities of old have collapsed. The heroes are dead or mad. And the goal oh, no. <laughs> is over. Looking out upon their decaying kingdom, everyone would like nothing more than to lay down and die. Too bad for them. That's that sucks, the man. They couldn't do. The world has been right, yeah. by the undead curse, turning anyone with the mysterious dark sign into mindless, violent hollows upon repeated soul-crushing deaths. But mm -hmm. there is a prophecy of a chosen undead who will journey to Lordran, the home of the gods, and save the world. Rotting away in an asylum. Nice transition. Was an assist from an unlucky knight. <laughs> Dislikes <giant> easy <laughs> mode. <laughs> That's good. The hero was ready to claw their way through their progenitor's forgotten homeland. And it helps that as long as they can keep their sense of purpose, an undead will always resurrect at the nearest bonfire. Now they might slowly lose their memories, their personality, and their sanity, but the curse right. gives them as much time as they need to get But as long as they keep their purpose. Undead That's interesting. Resilient, Maybe there's a workaround. I don't know. Chest. They've been chewed, eaten, and digested by what I can only describe as a toilet demon. And they can Fair have description. Their torn from their very body, because undead humans don't need their souls to survive. Just pops so they don't need the soul. Okay, interesting. And they're good to go. If anything, it seems like they get off to it. <laughs> And speaking of souls, nah, come on, man. Don't make it weird. Of their fallen enemies to increase their power. They're a master with swords, hammers, spears, axes, bows, you name it. And that's without any formal training. With the mm -hmm. right stats and setup, they can be anything from a cartwheeling assassin to a dragon-smashing tank. To the giantest of dads. And despite <laughs> the serious gothic themes, and we're combining these, all of this. These can get anime as hell. Smoo's great hammer is a ginormous mallet the size of a sedan. Based on its Damn. size and likely bronze composition, it'd have to weigh over a hundred tons. A lot like Goff's great bow, which can shoot pillar-sized arrows and one-shot dragons out of the sky. Or my favorite, they gotta go over the, the dragons, yeah. 
great sword produced from the ass of the albino dragon <laughs> and founder of sorcery, Seath the Scaleless. This baby's a universe hopping anomaly that can fire powerful sword beams and just. Oh, it just looks so cool! It does look Shows cool. Dead has learned magic I like that shiny look. In the world. They can create shockwaves, form defensive barriers, reflect damage, throw balls of flame, control mines, fire magical crystal spears, turn invisible, and toss bolts of sunlight strong enough to... There's no way I'm going to remember all this. Immortal dragons. So immortal dragons of course. So, if it comes down to it, they can shut off all magic in the vicinity with the miracle Vow of Silence. Really? anyone from speaking any spells but, aloud, including themselves. Oh, with like the shouts like Dragonborn? Oh, boy. attention paid to the stamina bar... But would that include his own magic? Rolling their way to victory. A roll so powerful it bends <laughs> the laws of space and warps them through attacks like they were. I love comic dead. conventions. Though sometimes it doesn't work and it's bullshit. That's just a game mechanic, but great to use when you're panicking. They've defeated right. Nido, the god of death, the bed of chaos, the mother of all demon kind. And Calamite, the strongest what names? surviving ancient dragon. That was when the Chosen Undead was dragged back in time to face the fallen knight Artorius, the greatest warrior in history. And not only defeat him, but accomplish the greatest feat attributed to Artorius' legend, the destruction of Manus, the father of the abyss that threatened to consume the world. They've even beaten okay. the Chosen Undead from alternate worlds. Does like the world the just mean the planet or like the universe so in this case? Raise the sun, bro! And soon they were approached by these two slithery freaks. One said to link the fire, and the other said to let it die out. Which right. Which totally makes sense. Wiz can explain it. Don't look at me. Dark Souls lore is as notoriously convoluted as the flow of its time stream. Which is why we right. have a true expert in the realms of nerdum to explain it for us. Oh, Jocelyn. <sighs> you wouldn't believe how many item descriptions, <laughs> forum posts, and moody 2013 lore videos I had to watch through for this. Right. It's you get all the hard work. <laughs> in the beginning, but good to see you, Jocelyn. Unformed and static. Then suddenly, the first flame burst to life. Mm -hmm. With it, the concepts of heat and cold, life and death, energy and time, light and dark. Sounds like a mythological Big Bang. The gods were yeah? granted immensely powerful souls from the first flame. But their greatest fear was the soul possessed collectively by the race known as humanity, the Dark oh. Soul. The Sky Father Gwyn feared humanity's immortality, and so sealed their dark souls within them. But as humanity reproduced, the dark soul collectively grew, and the first flame waned. Turns out, humans were naturally undying, or according okay. to God's propaganda, undead. Yes. A little hard to follow, but I'm the trying to pay attention. Linking the fire means using your very soul as fuel to keep the first flame burning. If an undead champion believes their immortality is a curse, they'll do anything to prevent it, including burning fragments of the dark soul to keep the age of the gods going. Okay. So you're a pawn in a game played by decrepit gods desperately clinging to power. Well, that sounds about right. Summer. They might look like a depressed California raisin, but in order <laughs> to link the flame, their soul needs to be strong enough to maintain the whole universe and the flow of time for another thousand years. Other similarly powerful undead. Is that just one soul or collective souls? Even light itself, based on their dodge compared to this beam and the time it took to reach them, they oh be boy. acting and moving at over twenty percent the speed of light. Oh okay. At the end of I was worried it was gonna be like a number so high. <laughs> the lord of cinder long hollowed from linking the flame a thousand years ago right so which will you choose link the fire and prolong the current age or let it fade until only dark remains this is the biggest bummer of them all <laughs> is it never mattered the cycle just continues age after age with yep. new heroes replacing the old ones until the chosen undead was long forgotten until the infinite march of time ground the world to ash it Dark Souls does sound pretty cool, to be honest. It didn't exist. It was about the struggle to get there. That's ultimately what gives us meaning. Okay, interesting way to, to go about it. This battle is sponsored by Brandon. That's right. I want to hear this, actually. the thrilling world of versus music with Brandon Yates. Mm -hmm. As he brings hypothetical matchups to life through his commission composition. I hear Diabolical Invincible Brandon Me in the background. Nice. Behind Death Battle, bringing us the incredible show-stopping songs you know and yes. love. Seriously, we love this guy. We do. Hello, Go Drain, check him out. Pride, Hedge of Tomorrow, All his original stuff, too. Greats. In fact, he composed the track for this very episode. 
We'd Great. love it if you supported Brandon's work and enjoyed more of his music by subscribing to his channel and following him on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Ever had a matchup you just want to see on the show and you just wish you had the music track for it? Well, fans commissions. of Death Battle have been loving Brandon's music for years, all commissioned by fans like you. Yep. We're talking hundreds of commissioned songs, all for hypothetical episodes of Death Battle. Mm -hmm. Everything from hard rock to jazzy to electronic to orchestral choirs. Yeah, a and ton. Oh, Riddle Me Why, I saw that one. Main composers of this show, every track he makes sounds straight out of Death Battle itself. Yeah. Love the music from Death no, honestly, like him and Theorwolf and anyone else who has created Death Battle music, like, go support right them. Away. They they deserve the support. Hey, now Skyrim. Are finally awake. Welcome <laughs> to the Paradise. I love how they started it with that. Visit the quaint Nordic villages. Hike up to the throat of the world. Marvel at the beauty of Blackreach. Hey, what's that in the sky? Why, it's Macho Man Randy Savage. No, it's Thomas the Tank Engine. No, well, okay, the mods. Dragon, but not just any mutant yeah. Drake. This is the mods are crazy. <laughs> And he's come to burn everything to a cinder. But fortunately for you, his path of destruction happened to interrupt your impending execution at the hands of those uppity imperial. You pigs. know what? I appreciate That'll that. Be the worst mistake <laughs> this daily monster would ever make. It wouldn't be long before you escaped the destruction of Helgen and defeated a dragon yourself. Then absorbed its freaking soul. Yep. That could only mean one thing. You are a being born with the blood and soul of a dragon in the body of a Nord or Elf or Khajiit or Lizard. Whichever one you choose. To battle Alduin and save the world. In their tongue, you are the Dovahkiin, Dragonborn. Yeah. In that quest to rid Tamriel of Alduin. These transitions they're doing are the really Dragonborn interesting. Dragonborn became a jack of all trades, master so of. Blessed by Todd oh, Howard. They learned to be a master assassin with the Dark Brotherhood, a master sorcerer with the College of Winterhold, a master thief with the Nightingale. And again, we're combining all of this. That's so cool. And a master good boy, who's a good boy? That's a good boy. They even fought <laughs> the Skyrim Civil War on the side of the Imperial Legion. What does immortality mean? mean? I need to hear that. War for independence on the side of the Stormcloaks. <laughs> those elf-funded Nord supremacists? Better than those jack-booted Cyrodiil fascists? Everyone just well, sucks, they don't they? A monster who steals from innocent villagers by sticking <laughs> buckets over their heads. They can put their skills to good use with some of this gameplay just seems so funny. Not just the usuals like daggers, swords, hammers, and axes, but also special weapons given to them by the Daedric princes. They're basically crazy powerful gods from the plane of existence called Oblivion. From that waskily wabbit Sheogorath, Skyrim was what, 2011? I think? A staff that casts a completely random spell on its target. From disintegrating right. them to healing them Jack is awesome. turning them into a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> From Meridia, they received the Dawnbreaker, a holy sword made for burning the undead to ash. That's similar to Oriel's bow. Does that include hollows, though, like Dark Souls? The sun to cover the distance and the would that even kill him permanently, seconds, you know? The arrow would have to be moving at over 250 times the speed of light. Well, that's a lot Except bigger than the Earth number they gave out for Chosen Undead. Nern, and that's Magnus. According to the Elder Scrolls lore master Michael Kirkbride in his in-universe text cosmology, okay. when you look up at the sun, you're actually looking into a dimension of pure magic. Confused yet? I am. No, I thought that's exactly. what the sun was normally. <laughs> make, but if anything, the distance should be much greater. Speaking of magic bullshit, the Dragonborn can heal themselves. Cast wards and destructive elemental spells, control minds, conjure weapons, and summon lesser Daedra to help them out in a scrap. They're an especially mm. powerful mage because their mana recovers itself automatically over time. They'll never truly run out of firepower. But as a that could be important. The ability but again, can he kill Chosen Undead? That's the thing. Shout. By speaking the words of the dragon language, they can manifest their will into reality. Like with the classic Booze Roda, an unrelenting force which can knock your neighbors into next week, or Soul Tear, which removes the soul from your enemy's body and stores it in a cute gem. But Let's does that go. matter? I don't think so for Chosen Are Dead. <laughs> oh. Wait, why didn't anything? Oh. Student loans, man. Something had to cover the down payment. With the you death, sold your soul? Is that what I'm getting from this? <laughs> slow down time and even call upon a Jesus. Odaving. 
Dragons may look like scaly reptiles, but in reality, they're immortal demigods older than time itself. They're the children of the chief god of Tamriel's pantheon. The Dragonborn is an unstoppable force of nature. If they happen to take any damage, they can just drink a potion or nosh on a cheese wheel and be good as new. I love the and cheese. They can carry up to 150 cheeses at once. My Which, dream. how? Assuming how do you do that? <laughs> large cheese wheels have an average weight of 70 We're actually pounds. calculating the mass. The Dragonborn can carry up to 10,500 pounds of cheese. And you, that makes sense. Wait, how many tons is that again? Muscles with giants. Like 5,000? A little over five. The game or five. No, I'm getting that wrong. Ignore me. Has battled the vampire like 50 Lord tons or something? I don't know. Skyrim Civil War and defeated the first dragonborn, Mirak. And according to the book, The Guardian and the Traitor, Mirak was powerful enough to tear apart the island of Solstheim from Skyrim's mainland. By comparing the size of various countries on Tamriel's map, we can determine that Solstheim is a landmass nearly 1,500 miles in diameter. In order to move that much land over the course of their fight, Mirak's magical prowess must have output an energy over 300 teratons of TNT. Wow. That's three times the impact of the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. They keep going back to the 100 teraton blast, yeah. Can get strong enough to shake the world itself. It wasn't long before the Dragonborn confronted Alduin in Nord Heaven and put an end to the World Eater once and for all. The epithet is literal. By absorbing the souls in Skyrim's afterlife, Alduin was powerful enough to devour everything. Not mm -hmm. just the planet of Nern, but the Kalpa, the entire timeline past, present, and future. That's yep. the level of unimaginable power the Dragonborn is dealing with here. Tamriel is no stranger to great heroes across its vast, sprawling history. The Nerevarine, the hero of Kavach, all magnificent in their All own. names I don't but know. <laughs> you heard that shout echoed through the mountains, and the death throes of a dragon defeated. You knew it could only be the Dovahkiin. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all right, the that was both of them. The data through all Yay. Time for, a death Time for a death battle and pause the video. Okay, so it's interesting. So like I said, I was kind of already making some comparisons between the characters. So like the speed feat that they threw out for Dovahkiin did seem better than Chosen Undead by quite a margin. Um, but again, they could always throw out another speed feat for either of the characters later, which could change things, you know, so not really sure about that. Um, in terms of physical power, it seems like they both have power that's capable of like, you know, matching or like equating to like universal levels or possibly beyond that, like with the first flame and Alduin. Um, the problem though is that like, again, I'm not 100% sure when it comes to like the souls maintaining the universe can... Like, I was probably talking over it if they did mention it, but, like, could that only be equated to one soul, or was it, like, all the souls that maintain the universe? And one soul would be much less than that, you know? Because that would be, a you know, a big deal. Um, even still, with all of that, though, I'm not sure if I heard or picked up on a way that Dragonborn could actually have Chosen Undead stay down for good. Because they said that he can operate without a soul, so the shout that takes away the soul is, you know problematic like it's not problematic for him um and you know th there's also the mind control that they brought up for um for dragonborn which makes me think that you know could he just mind control him to lose his sense of purpose could he do that um but then but then uh chosen and dead also has mind control so it's like would would those cancel each other out or if they come to the conclusion that dragonborn is powerful would they say that even though they both have mind control only dragonborns would actually end up meaning something because he's more powerful. I don't know, you know? Um, the thing I'm also thinking about is the fact that, what was it, that the Chosen Undead can just, like, take away all magic and, like, all the spoken magic, which would include the shouts, would it not? So if that also takes away his own magic, then that kind of puts both of them at a disadvantage. They're really just left with their non-magical weapons. But again, you know, I'm not sure if Dragonborn would be able to take down Chosen Undead without magic. So if Chosen Undead just takes it away, can Dragonborn even kill him at that point? Like, even though it would put both of them at a disadvantage, I'm not sure if it means the Chosen Undead could lose, you know? I, I feel like there, like there is so much that they went over for these characters. I'm definitely missing like 101 things. I'm not going to be able to go over every single thing they have because they do have a lot of overlapping stuff. Um, but they did say that, 
you know uh, the dawnbreaker which is something i knew before but the dawnbreaker is specifically uh effective against the undead but i don't know if that applies to hollows like in um in dark souls uh, i don't know if that would actually keep him dead for good you know um so honestly i have no idea right now like again in my prediction i went for uh the dragonborn and if dragonborn wins this and that means i got my prediction video correct but honestly you know i maybe i have to lean a little more towards uh chosen undead just because i feel like you know i, I feel like there were ways that he could stop himself from losing i guess but again that's just me picking up on what i picked up on there's probably a lot of other stuff that i didn't really pick up on so you know, let's uh let, let's just watch this episode and we'll see we'll see what happens. Whatever my reasoning is, it probably won't even be correct anyway, so let's just go. Go and stop this fool who would let the flame I'm excited for the fight either way. Looks pretty good already. That is a nice shot. How fluid will it be, though? That's the question. Nice track. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> A lot of melee stuff at the beginning. Makes sense. <laughs> the roll. You can't escape the roll. <laughs> it just keeps going. I love that. Oh, yeah, that thing. I think Dovahkiin could take that, but... Well, obviously, he got back up. <laughs> what, the Achilles knee? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, okay, time's slowing. Did it stop or slow down? Either way, it worked. <laughs> is that his soul? Yeah, it is. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, of course, the flame is right there so that the battle can keep going. Makes sense. Ooh. Ouch. Alright, so maybe not the most fluid fight in the world, but still looks really good. And ow! Oh, what do we got? Oh, okay. Going, going full dragon. So he, he seems to be capable. Because he yeah, has a summon, yeah. <laughs> and absorb the soul. Oh, okay, no, he killed him, okay. <laughs> it seems like he is capable of killing him. But can he make him stay dead? Oh my god, that looks cool. Whoa. Right, the awesome looking sword. Epic shot. Come on, guys. I know I can't really root for both of you, but <laughs> you both got this. Oh. Okay, this looks good. My heart is being so fast, by the way. Oh. Right, yeah, okay. No magic. Or no verbal magic, at least. Oh, God! To die. There we go! Okay, so we came back. I guess. Save this world, chosen warrior. Bring the fire. Okay. There's so many times I feel like the kill shot is going back and forth. Let true and what happened? Be cast upon the world. Our Lord hath returned. <laughs> okay, I'm a little confused. KO! You die! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this debate was fascinating. The mm -hmm. Dragonborn had a wider variety of training, better access to summons, and magic that passively regenerated. As yeah. opposed to the Chosen Undead's limited pool of magic. Right. Silence was a slick counter to the Dragonborn's magic and shouts. 
but it wouldn't last forever. The Dragonborn was significantly faster too. The Chosen Undead could dodge beams of. I'm still at 100 percent sure who won. Fire arrows that move Is that weird? Fifty times that. But none of it right. mattered if the Chosen Undead couldn't stay dead. You'd think the Dragonborn's anti-undead weaponry like Dawnbreaker would be an easy solution, but the undead of Dark Souls aren't really the same as okay remember the conspiracy humans and dark souls are naturally immortal they're not actually undead right so there wouldn't have been much use either considering humans and dark souls can have their souls removed with yeah dying so why didn't the chosen undead just keep coming back until they eventually won like with any dark souls buzz one word power the dragonborn wait did dragonborn win i'm still confused raw power than the chosen undead oh yeah like summoning country spanning storms with a single shout or defeating call me the biggest idiot but like i i'm just kind of lost the war both characters are essentially mythological demigods in the same kind of vein as hercules or sun Wukong. gameplay mm -hmm. alone won't give you nice callback of their full power as characters so let's get an idea of their max potential from the lore. The chosen right. dead sustaining the first That's sweet flame lore. was insanely impressive. Considering the first flame is responsible for the core concepts of the universe, like energy and time, it's not a stretch to say it affects not just the planet they live on, but the whole universe. But that's nothing. Okay, that, that's the, the question I had, yeah. The Elder Scrolls. Let's compare the first flame to Alduin. Both literally run on the power of souls, and both can be directly scaled to our combatants. How do we right. have strength to consume the universe? Not just Nern, but the Kalpa as well. You know those planets you see in the sky? According to cosmology, yes. <laughs> those are actually separate, infinitely big planes of reality. Alduin was going to eat infinity. Multiple infinities. In right, so infinity like squared or Okay, so Dragonborn totally won. Time. But it can't be infinite. Otherwise, it never would have faded to begin with. And that meant the Chosen Undead just wasn't powerful enough no matter how many times they revive. With that much of a difference in power, the Chosen Undead would eventually lose their will to fight and go hollow. It's not traditional, but it is a form of death in Dark Souls. The right. Chosen Again, Undead like I was saying, they can choose to die if they want. But still wasn't enough to stand up to the Dragon okay. incredible skill. Yeah, I was still so confused about what happened. Power. The chosen undead, but it, only it, it makes so sense to me. Before they flamed out, the winner is the Dragonborn. All right, good job, Dragonborn. I'm gonna have to rewatch this fight watching. again. Stay tuned. We have also, I'm excited for this because we don't have like as nearly as much of a good idea of what's coming next. If I had to wager a guess, Bowser versus Eggman, but I don't know. Definitely not Bowser versus Eggman. Is that is that Killua? Is that who that is, or am I getting that completely wrong? K Killua versus M Misaka? Is that what that says on my screen? Yeah, Killua. Oh shoot, I'm messing up my uh, messing up my recording. Um, okay, yeah. So, okay, I my guess would have been Bowser versus Eggman personally, just because that is one that I think may be coming up at some point. Um, I don't know if I heard this one being thrown out too much about the um, uh, like the champion wheel. Oh, not, not the champion wheel, sorry. Uh, the um, the zodiac wheel, like the cryptic wheel, um, when they have all those symbols that represent different um, different matchups. Um, I'm not super familiar with these characters. I know uh, Killua is from Hunter x Hunter, right? Are we actually getting a Hunter x Hunter character on Death Battle? That's really cool. Uh, Misaka, I'm not sure if I know where she's from. Um, I'll, I guess maybe I'll make a prediction on this one. I'm not 100% sure, though, because I'm not really sure if I know the most about these characters to be honest um i know usually i make a prediction for like every fight or as many fights as i can but uh but yeah i, I don't know we'll see about this one it's, it's a little it's a little hard to say um i am quite busy as well so we'll have to see uh, but anyway talking about this fight okay so clearly i did not have a good idea of what was going on during the battle and especially they were going on about like oh yeah like they're not uh really undead or like the traditional undead like the chosen undead so i was thinking like wait did that mean the chosen undead one but I guess the fact that they really, like, they kept the focus on Dragonborn should have tipped me off that he did win. Um, as opposed to just Chosen Undead, who would not have been on the screen if he was still alive. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's my bad. Sorry about that. Um, I feel very stupid. Um, but this was a very cool fight. I liked all the things they brought out for the characters. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, the fluidity, again, I feel like maybe it could have been a bit more fluid. We've definitely seen more fluid 3D fights from Death Battle before. 
but I don't think that hindered it that much in terms of my enjoyment, at least. Um, I still enjoyed a lot of the things they incorporated for the characters. The analyses, part of me wants to say it was overcomplicated, but I really think that's just me not knowing a lot about the characters. And as I've said for other fights like Scarlet Witch versus Zatanna, I would prefer it if Death Battle really went into the nitty gritty for these characters. So I feel like I can't really complain that much because I feel like they did do it for these characters. Um, of course, someone can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not that knowledgeable of either series, at least not to this extent, obviously. Um, but, uh, but it really feels like they did do that. So I'm really happy that they did that. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, the humor, I thought the humor, uh, worked a lot of the time. I did like a lot of the stuff they included, like the you died. That's another thing that should have tipped me off that it was, uh, um, it was the chosen undead dead that died. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, that's, that's the character I went for in my prediction. Um, but I just wasn't sure, you know, if the, how they were going to approach, uh, you know, Chosen Undead and, you know, like, taking away the magic and whether or not he could choose to die or not. Um, it really felt like, you know, Chosen Undead had a way to just make sure he did not die. But again, as I was saying before, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, the power, you know, if they came to the conclusion that, uh, that, that Dragonborn was more powerful, which was, like, the big thing that I was leaning on in my prediction video and somewhat in this video, then it did really seem like, you know, he just, like, Chosen and didn't have that many options. Uh, so I, I totally, you know, understand their reasoning. I totally can get behind their reasoning. There might be some people who are upset with it. Um, but overall, I thought this was a pretty decent episode. I, I enjoyed it quite thoroughly. I enjoyed learning about more about the, uh, the series, the franchises. Um, so yeah, um, I'm... I'm, I'm really satisfied with this episode, but I want to hear what you guys have to say. Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Who do you think should have won? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Comment your comments down below. Subscribe if you could too. That would be amazing. But no matter what you guys do, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, that's it for me. I will see all of you guys in the next video. Peace out.